Alright, so it's Professor Gilmet here, and this is the follow-up video to the logical arguments, and here are some, oh, <laughs> uh, some argument uh, examples, okay? And so, <clears throat> here we have E, if E, then F, right? And so this is, this is premise one, right? And then we have E, so that's premise two. It's been a long time since I've used the pen. And then we have the three dots, and so our conclusion therefore is F, so that's our conclusion. And we have a couple of options here, right? One, we can look for the standard argument, or we can do a truth table. And the truth table's not too bad if you do an Excel. Um, if you're doing it by hand, it's a tiny bit um, longer. But luckily for us, right, we see that if the premise is P then Q, and we have P, then we can logically conclude Q because that is a valid argument. And so as I look at this, I'm going to say that this is, oh, I can't, I'm sorry. I'm working on the, oh, I have, I have too much. I see what happened here. I'm just, I'm out of practice. All right, so this is going to be valid. All right, um, so this is definitely a valid argument. Um, next, we have A then B. That's going to be premise one. And then we have not A, and so that's going to be premise two. And then therefore, we have not B. And so that's our conclusion. And what we want to know is, is this a standard argument and is it true? So let's go ahead and look. And of course, if you actually have um, P then Q and you don't have P, then you don't have Q is actually an invalid argument. And so what we're gonna say here is, Um, that this is invalid due to the standard form. Okay, and so now we're ready to go on. So here we have P then Q. Here is premise one. We have O. There's premise two. And you'll notice O is the conclusion. Right, so given the conclusion, is the premise able to be um, assumed, right? Is this a valid argument? So this is my conclusion, all right? And so we're looking for this as a standard logical argument, and I come over here and I go, oh, look, if I have P, then Q, and I have the conclusion, the premise, uh, that's an invalid argument, right? <laughs> the premise being the conclusion. If the conclusion is the premise and the premise is the conclusion, that is invalid. You cannot say that, okay? So that follows one of the invalid forms. And so, um, this is gonna be definitely, oh, 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 in, valid. And again, I'm sorry about the pen today. I'm, I just feel like this is the best way to do it, and so uh, maybe I should have practiced. All right, so here now we have the disjunctive, uh, C or D, and so that is, again, premise one. And then we have not C, and so that's premise Two. And so with the disjunctive, right, if we have an or and then a not statement, 
is the conclusion um, the other guy, right? Is, this, is therefore D, is that going to be a valid conclusion? And again, I would love it if there was a um, logical argument for this, and there is, uh, the disjunctive syllogism. If you've got two statements or and one statement is negated, the other statement is the conclusion. That is a valid argument, no matter what letters you um, use. And so if I go and pick my pen, then this is going to be <clears throat> this is going to be valid, right? By the symbolic logic, right? And if you look at this one, again, I've got a disjunctive as my premise, and I have this not K. Now, it doesn't matter that it's this one, and this one was the first one, because the or is sort of commutative, right? So this is a premise here. And basically, I could write this as K or J. That wouldn't change anything. So then if I have not K, then it would follow that I have J um, from this above argument. And so this is also going to be valid, right? So the order doesn't really matter. That's why I have this example here, right? The order for or uh, and and do not matter. Wow. Okay, that's a don't, by the way. All right, but now, oh no, here's R. Here's P and here's Q. So now we actually have three statements. And so if you think about this, then I have to do this one with a truth table. And I wanted to do one more truth table one because they won't they won't all be logical arguments that you have written down, right? So how are we gonna do this one? Well, the first premise is R implies um, R if and only if P, right? So I'm gonna switch over. And so here I've got these, right? And so here is premise one. And, and premise one is R um, if and only if P. And so if I remember how to, to code that, right? This is only gonna be true when they're equal. And so I've got them equal here, right? I've got them equal here. Uh, it's true, false. I've got them equal here, and I've got them equal here. So these are the places where they're equal. All the other places they're not. So I'm going to have a true, right? Um, and then false. Oh my goodness. True, uh, false. Right? False, true, false, true. Right? So every place where they're equal, true, true is equal, true, true is equal, false, false is equal, false, false is equal. Everywhere that they are equal, I've got a true here. Now, if you wanted to, you could have just programmed this in, right? You could have just said equals if, right? If this one is equal to this one, then it's going to be true. Otherwise, it is going to be false. And if I do it that way, there's my true. I copy it down, right? There's my true, 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 the rest being false. And so I've got a nice thing there, right? So I filled that in. Um, then I have not P that I need. So now I need not P. So I gotta fill that in. That's not a premise, right? Not P, but I gotta fill that in. And of course, that's the opposite truth value, right? So I'm gonna have false, 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 and then true, 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 true. Okay, so I probably would just copy and paste these, um, but I'm just gonna code it in. I know that that's the not. I know that it's this one right here. And so now I'm just going to copy and paste it down and then save it to get rid of the copying, right? And so now you can see false where it's true, 
and true where it is false. Now I'm ready for premise two. And so premise two is um, P and Q, not P and Q, right? Got not P and Q. So here we go, uh, not P and Q. Now this is only gonna be true where they're both true, right? So here I've got true, false, so that's not gonna work. True, false, that's not gonna work. False, false, that's not gonna work. False, false, that's not gonna work. Here we go, true and true. So this is the only place where they are true, these only two places. Everywhere else, it's going to be false because there's at least um, one false in the statement, right? Um, now, to code it, it's pretty easy, right? It's the and statement, and I need this one, and I need this one, and then again, I copy and paste, and you can see that, um, again, there's only those two trues. Everything else is false. And I save it to get rid of the thing. And so now I'm ready um, to use the fact that if the two premises are true, then the conclusion should follow. And I should end up with a tautology if this is true. Okay. So I need to and premise one and premise two together, right? So really this is um, premise one and premise two together, right? And so if it's an and statement, then they both have to be true, right? So true, false, nope, false, false, nope, true, false, nope, false, false, nope, false, true, nope. Oh look, here it is, true, true. This is the only place where that and statement is, right? And so uh, I'm gonna cut this and I'm just gonna move it up because really what I want here is um, the premise one, right? R uh, if and only if P and, right, the not P and Q, right, together. That's what I want. Th that's what premise one and two is. This does not say premise. No, it does. Yay. And so again, um, the only place that they're gonna be true is here. Everywhere else they're gonna be false. Um, but what I could do is I could use my and command again. So I've got and here. And what do I need? I need this one and I need this one. And then I'm gonna close it up and hit enter and copy it and paste it down. And I'll see again that the only place it's true is right there. And that makes me um, happy. And so finally what I need to do is I need to have the um, if, right, then statement, the conclusion. And so what's going to happen here is I'm going to take this, right? And if this is true, then my conclusion should always be, what should my conclusion always be? It should always be P or R. Okay. Oh, so what I need, I need my conclusion. I need P or R, right? So let's delete that and delete that. All right. So now I need my conclusion. And my conclusion is P or R. Okay, so that's good. So here I'm gonna have P or R. So I'm all the way back over here. So P or R. Now these just have to be uh, one of them true, right? So this is gonna be true, 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 this is gonna be true. This is false. They are both false here and they are both false here. So row eight and 10, these would be the places where it is false. Okay, oh, row eight and 10, sorry. Somebody's freaking out right now going, oh, that's not what I put. It's okay, eight and 10, 
right? All the rest of them are gonna be true because there's at least one true in those or statements. But what do I wanna do now? Well, let's code it in, right? How do we code that in? Well, it is the or command. And I need P or R, so there's my P or my R, and I hit uh, enter. And then of course, again, I am copying and pasting down, and there it is, eight and 10 are the only two places it is false, right? Um, now, I'm ready to do my if then statement. And so this is the if, right? Um, premise one and premise two are true, then the conclusion uh, should follow, right? And so if premise one and premise two is true, then the conclusion should follow. And so what I have here is this big monstrosity, right? And then that should imply um, the P or uh, R, right? And so really a false implying a true, that's gonna be true. False true, false true, false true, false true. All of these places, it's true. I got the conclusion that I wanted even if the premises were false. But here I run into a big issue when the premise is true, but the conclusion is false. If I clean my room and my mom doesn't let me go out, this is the one place that the conditional is false. And so now we have proved um, that this is not a valid argument. And um, if you want to follow the standard form for the coding, right, that would be equals if, and then I would combine the and statement. Um, if this is true and this is false, then the conclusion should be false. Otherwise, everything else will be true. And it's going to follow that just standard if then coding that we've been doing all along. And then I hit enter and I get true. So what should happen if I copy and paste this down is it should be false in one spot, and it is right there. And so this is not going to be a valid argument. All right, so you can see this is a little time consuming. Um, if you code it in, it's not too bad, but you know we did have quite a few columns there, okay? And so now we can go back to our um, table here, right? And we can say that this is not, oh gee whiz. <clears throat> that this is not valid. And that makes me sad, In invalid, not valid. And that makes me sad. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna do the uh, syllogisms in the next one because this is already getting to be kind of a long video. All right, so I hope these make you happy and I hope you're happy to see the syllogisms in the next video.